I go on blue color farm. Well, earning season is in its second innings, and a lot of company drop results last week. A lot of those results, profit was beyond pre-pandemic levels. So, I guess we can say the COVID effect is officially over. So companies has recovered from the COVID effect. All right, so we see where the companies are performing beyond their pre-pandemic levels. All right, but how did their stock price perform? So what we want to do in this video is to briefly do an overview of some of the results of some of your favorite companies, while at the same time, we will look at how the stock prices has performed throughout last week trading period. All right, and there is a lesson in this review for a lot of short-term stock pickers. You ever wonder where Blue Color Finance get a lot of the information that we include in our videos? Let me give you the secret. There is a website called businesssuiteonline.com. This website covers a wide variety of business topics from broad market to women in business to technology, logistics, renewable energy. And one of my favorite features on the site is the ranking of the top 100 companies across the region. All right, so this feature rank the regional companies based on their after-tax profit. So let me just tap into that and show you. In 2021, NCB was ranked number one in terms of its after-tax profit, and that's in US dollar. Now, 2022 list is not out as yet. And I'm anxious to see where NCB will fall on that list. All right, so you can check them out. It is businesssuiteonline.com. And it's a professional site that gives you a wide cross-section of business information. So the first stock on our list is Fesco, everybody's favorite stock. So we see where Fesco released its fourth quarter results and the company did absolutely well. Fourth quarter, the company was able to grow its income by 32%. And that was a higher growth rate than the 24% that the company grew its income by in the third quarter. No. Does this mean that Fesco has found new life? Does it mean that Fesco will continue to grow in the future? That is something that we need to look at. However, what we see is that Fesco's price did not move up according to this growth rate. All right, but prior to the earnings, um, but prior to the earning release, Fesco price had traded up to about seven dollars throughout the week and after the result came out we see where the stock price just pulled back a bit to now trading at six dollars and 71 cents so that's a six percent fall off in fesco's price after the release of this excellent result now what was investors saying why did the stock price fall off even after the company has reported higher growth than last quarter. That could simply mean that all of these growth that the company is experiencing was already priced in the $7 stock price. And because of that, the stock did not respond positively to this new information that is now in the market. You know what, Blue Color Finance would like to give the exclusive so let me just drop a little gem right here. So now when we look at Fesco's trailing 12 months result at the fourth quarter, 
it turned out to be $268 million. Now, if we should just step back a bit to the third quarter and measure the 12 months, the trailing 12 months earning, that was some $280 million. So what that means is that the 12 months earning, the trailing 12 months earning has actually fall off instead of growing, all right? So this could mean that fiscal growth has peaked somewhat, all right? And that could be the reason why the company has, or the stock price has pulled back. Now at $6.71, which was the closing price on Friday, that puts the company or value the company at a PE of 80X, while its book value was at some 23X. This still, is saying that Fesco is a growth company, but, but is it really? Do you believe Fesco can grow to justify these astronomically high PE? Now, when you look at the company's balance sheet, the company has over a billion dollar of cash sitting on the balance sheet. This is some money that the company raised in debt recently, and this money will be deployed to Eric two additional gas stations. Also, that money will be used to build out the company's LNG project. And we'll see where the company is planning to enter the cooking gas market, all right? So, right? so that money that they borrowed is to be used to enter the cooking gas market also. However, these new stations and entering the, the cooking gas market will not common stream until at least 18 months all right so you have some amount of time to wait before you can see those projects impacting the company's um, financial statements however the interest that the company will have to pay on these loans will start impacting the company's financial statement immediately as the company has already received those loans. In the near and short term, we are not looking to see Fesco's price increasing, all right? And we are looking to see the price falling back somewhat to now finding its intrinsic value as more sentiment comes out of the pricing of the stock and more rational investors start investing in this stock. Now, moving on to another crowd favorite, Edifocal. All right, I was aware Edifocal dropped its first quarter result um, during the, um, the last trading week, and that is the first time the company is reporting results since listing on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Now, everybody know the Edifocal story. The company has returned over 250% for its shareholders since just the other day when the company listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Now, the result was not a bad result. To me, it was an Excellent results. So we see where the company grew revenue by 81% and income was $2 million. And that is coming from a loss from the corresponding period. Earnings per share was $0.003 from a loss of $0.006 um, the previous year. This to us was an excellent performance as the company turns the corner. All right, and this is the first result um, that is not aided by the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is telling us that the company does has um, the potential to grow without the effect of the COVID and the whole lockdown thing that helps to propel the company's profit and margins during the lockdown period. However, we're seeing where the market did not respond to the stock price positively. So last week, the company stock fell off from where it was selling by 6% to no trading or closing the, the, the week at $3.25. All right, so what has happened? 
why the stock would have fallen off even though the company has reported this excellent result. So again, it could simply mean that all of this results has already been priced into the stock. So investors buying the stock before the result um, comes, believing that if the result is good, then the stock price will move accordingly then they would have gotten burned, all right? Because now you might be buying the stock at a price or at a high price that is, or that has already incorporated all of those growth projections, all right? So it is very important for you to be able to project the growth going forward and de um, developing a value based on those projections. So you have a reasoning behind the, um, the price that you paid for the stock. Now at $3.25, that values a company at some $2 billion, all right? And uh, that's a PE, it gives the company a PE ratio of some 190X and a book value of some 690X. Now the question is, can Edifocal really grow its bottom line to justify these PE ratios. One of the things that we believe um, held back Edifocal's performance was management projections, all right? So we believe that management was too overly optimistic when making those projections. So management projected revenue to come in at $322 million for the year 2022. And we'll see where revenues came in at only $61 million for this quarter. That means revenue fell short by some $21 million. All right. So that will be a problem. Can management grow revenues in the future to actually make up for the lost grounds in this quarter? Also, one of the issues that we're finding out that we find out with the, um, the FESCO's operation is the financial costs that the company is still battling with. All right. So financial costs has eaten out of the company's profit. The company pay over some five million dollars in financial costs. If if there was no debt on the company's balance sheet, as management promised to clean up the debt of the balance sheet with the IPO money, then the company would have easily made some $7, bill, um, $7 million in this quarter. However, we're seeing where management is even borrowing money from related parties. So the company seems to us that they are strapped for cash. Now, is this mismanagement of the company's resources? Because it was just the other day in the IPO, the company picked up some $125 or $23 million and the company has easily made an acquisition and now the company is back in the position where it is now hunger for cash. Now, one thing is that Edifocal borrows money at very high interest rates. So we are, in, we are now in a high interest rate environment. So that means higher financial costs for the company going forward. Now, one good the company has for it is the acquisition that the company made the other day. Now, management has said that that acquisition, that business that it has purchased is already making profit. That operations need to come onto the company's financials and it will have a positive effect on the company's profit. All right, but Blue Color Finance has already priced Edifocal at some $2.80. And that's where we think the fair value of the company is. So we will not purchase an Edifocal at this $3.25 that it is selling for. All right, so another stock that we are really interested in uh, that we were watching is Stationaries and Office Supplies Limited, that is SOS. So Thursday, we saw the stock halting on the downside, and that was some hours before the company released its first quarter results. All right, so 
it seems like investors were expecting the company to come out with a lot lost the result as the quarter before that all right so they were anticipating this lukewarm results so they traded down the stock in hope of the stock price falling after the results so they could pick it up on a lower price and ride it back up whenever time the stock turn around and start making better profits all right however the result came and the company had historically high growth rates all right so the company had sales that were above any quarter or any month in its entire history all right so we see where the uh, the february seals broke the record for the highest seals in 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 the company's history and the march seals also broke the february seals record so the company was on a roll all right so on friday the opening of the bill the company traded up or halted up at the very opening of the bill. So investors were rushing to get back into the stock. All right. And that tripped the breaker. Now the company has actually traded over some $11 before pulling back slightly to close at some $10.57. All right. Now that put the company, our values the company at a PE of 25X. Well, its book value is some 3.9x all right so sos is one of those companies that to us is operating in a very fragmented market however a lot of those companies within its industry have gone belly up due to the fact that they did not have enough cash or enough resources to ride out that lockdown period when no company wanted office furniture to buy. No, SOS had enough cash on its balance sheet and the company was able to just smoothly ride out the period. And now that the, the, the market is now open and back to work, people are going back to work and they are redoing their offices for this new look, all right, given after two years of um, work from home and partial working in the office, then SOS is now positioned to take advantage of this new surge in business. However, given the high inflation that is raveling through the economy and the fact that the central bank is trying to calm this inflation by increasing interest rates, it creates some headwind for the company going forward. And we will keep a tap on the company's operation and on how they are responding to these new headwinds that have been developing. Now, Blue Collar Finance has estimated SOS fair value at $12. All right, so we are expecting that the company should hit this $12 mark in the near future. Our next one is Chance Jam, Chance Jamaica, all right? And this is another favorite. Now, a lot of investors has stick out and waited for Chance Jam stock to start or to turn the corner because the company has traded below its IPO price for over two years. And recently, we see where the company started trading up mostly in anticipation of the result that came out last week all right and the high point of the result is that overall traffic along the highways has increased some 4.5 percent now if you can recall in the prospectus the company has estimated traffic to increase on an average by three percent all right so we see where the company is growing traffic by a 1.5% higher than estimated. So that's a very good thing for Chance Jam. Also, the company has reported that revenue or the operation is now 
beyond the pre-COVID levels, all right? So traffic is now beyond what the company has experienced in 2019, all right? So more people are traveling now that the lockdown and the COVID phase is over and we are now back to normal operations. As a result, as a result of this, the company grew its top line by 21%. However, the bottom line grew by only 17%. How did, um, how did Transjam stock responded to these results? All right, for last week trading week, the stock price fell off some 5% to start trading at $1.55. That price the company at a market value of some 19 billion dollars. The company has a PE of 32x, while the price to book is 2.33x. Chance Jam is a dividend play. It has a dividend yield of over 7%. The second leg of the highway from Maypen to Williamsfield is expected to be finished in 2023. That is early 2023, as the project was pushed back from its completion date of 2022. So we're expecting that this new segment of the highway uh, will start pulling extra revenue to the company and also extra profit to the company. And as a result, you might see trans jam price increasing some more as it gets closer to the completion of the second leg of the highway. Now, a lot of other companies has released results during the last week, which were Cargo Angeles released result, which was a quite impressive result. Company grew net profit by some 45%. However, we see where the stock price fell off from about eleven dollars to now trading at about, at around ten dollars. All right. So again, that is proof that you cannot anticipate results and trade into these stocks or out of these stocks based on what you think the results uh, will come out to be. All right. Also, PBS has released results, and that company is still or its profit is still being hampered by the high tax charges all right so the company has always faced high tax charges which the company has committed or um, which a company has committed to resolve but it seems like the company cannot get out of the stronger hold of this exorbitant taxes that the company continues to pay year after year after year now in the coming weeks we are expecting a lot of other companies to release results and uh, we promise to be reviewing those results for you, all right? Um, a lot of results, a lot of company is expecting to re um, release results, all right? We are, we are waiting on the JMB result. We think that one will be an excellent result, all right? Some uh, Barita, Barita results should be out. We are, we are looking out for that one also. And the, the stocks in the financial sector, all right, so we want to see how those stocks is responding to the increased interest rates, all right, if, if it is that these rates are starting to have any impact on those companies' financial statements, all right. So as I know, it's blue-collar finance, and you know the thing for those, just like the video, share the video, help me grow the thing and get the thing bigger so we can go up on a bigger platform and we can do more things, all right? So next time, so we'll see you in the next video.